Introduction to the Design of a Gearbox for Tubofan Application. I am Alain Desmoulins, and this is a subject I decided to lead for my master thesis. The subject was proposed by Juan Miglet, who is my support of the thesis. First, let me introduce you the plan of the presentation. The first part will be dedicated about the context using three simple questions. What is a turbofan and how it works? Why do it need a gearbox? And if that viable? That's so the three questions I ask myself when I choose the subject. In a second time, I will present you the way I plan to organize my work to design this gearbox. Now, first question. What is a turbofan? As everybody is maybe not familiar with this uh, gas turbine, I'm going to give you a quick explanation. A turbofan is a turbo engine, so it uses a compressor at the front of the engine to compress the air. Then, in a combustor chamber, kerosene is mixed to the air, then burned. As the volume is fixed, this combustion increases the pressure of the gas thus its speed. The kinetic energy of the gas rotates the turbine, which are linked to the compressor through a shaft. The main problem with turbojet engine is its efficiency. At the speed of the gas which are propulsing the engine is really high compared to the speed of the engine, its efficiency is low. So, as you can see, there is 100% of the thrust which is provided by the heat exhaust gas. The idea is to add a fan in the front. This fan will push the air at a lower speed, so with a higher efficiency, it became a turbofan. This fan provides most of the thrust of the engine, which is around 80%. The ratio of the air passing through the fan bound the air passing through the gas turbine is called the bypass ratio. The higher the bypass ratio, the higher the efficiency. Today, most of the turbofan doesn't use gearbox, so we can ask the question, why do it need a gearbox? To answer this question, we have to look at two parameters that influence efficiency and the main two parts that compose the turbofan, which are the gas turbine and the fan. The main aspect in a gas turbine efficiency it is rotational speed. High speed means less wheels to compress the air and to get energy back from the exhaust gas. Thus, less weight less size, more simplicity, more reliability, and more efficiency. For a 320 size uh, optimized engine, low pressure stage has to be around 10,000 RPM, and oil pressure should be around 15,000 RPM. Now, have a look at the fan efficiency in the case of the aircraft. Its efficiency is even higher than the output speed of the air that's close to the speed of the aircraft. Considering conservation of linear momentum, movement quantity is equal to the product of the flow multiplied by speed. This means, if you want to reduce the output air speed in order to increase efficiency, you have to increase the flow, thus the diameter of the fan. On the other hand, we have the performance of a blade of the fan. If we look at the efficiency, it uh, drop dramatically when the blade tip reach or exceeds the speed of the sound, so it has to be below. Since this limited blade tip speed is a product of the diameter by the rotation speed, increasing the diameter will cause a reduction of the rotational speed on the fan. Consequently, for a fan of 80 sum of diameter, which is around 2 meter, its maximum speed would be around 3000 RPM. As you can see, a gearbox is needed in order to get the best of the two parts. For the fan, that means less noise due to the low rotational speed and more efficiency. For the gas turbine, this means higher efficiency and the possibility to get more energy back from the exhaust air. The bypass ratio can be increased. Thanks to the gearbox, Pretty Whitney reached a bypass ratio about 12 to 1 and the NASA are experimenting 18 to 1, when the conventional engines are running at 5 to 1 and can reach 11 to 1 for the best. This leads us to the last question. Is this viable? For now, there is very few gearbox engines, but Prate Whitney decided to propose an engine for the A320neo of Airbus. 
they claim a 15% reduction of the consumption for the engine compared to equivalent engine. Rolls Royce decided to start the development of a gearbox turbofan as well. Now, let me present you the way I want to go through this thesis. The idea is to design a planetary gear train. We will see a bit later why this type of train. The first step will be to choose the architecture of the train, then second step to choose the optimal number of gear. The first step would be to choose the type of the gear CS. Finally, gearing sizing, bearing sizing and lubrification and design can be done at the same time. First step, have a look on the architecture. The targets are keeping the weight as low as possible, keeping in mind this has to flight. Maximize the density in order to reduce the side, thus maximizing the integration in the engine. Maximizing the efficiency, we don't want to lose the gain of the optimization in the thermal loss in the gearbox. Using the best reduction ratio to the best optimization, finally, having no radial loads, we don't want to increase the complexity of the rotor dynamics of the shaft. To get those targets, first I will have to uh, choose the type of the train. It can be simple or the bow. Main difference would be the use of a gear bow, the thickness and the diameter of the gearbox. Then, to choose the moving part of the train, will it be a planetary fixed train or a planetary rotating train? This decision will impact the efficiency and the reduction ratio. Fixed train is better for efficiency, rotating train is better for reduction ratio. Second step, gear numbers and size ratio. Targets are quite the same, but we will have to think about having enough room left to fit the lubrification system. To get this target, an algebraic calculation has to be performed in order to find the best size ratio, satellite's number and test modulus. To show you there is no one good solution, these are two pictures of turbofan gearbox. On the top, Prate Whitney 8000. On the bottom, Prism induction gear turbofan. As you can see, the design is not the same as well as the gear numbers. Third step, test type. Here, the target are to think about the manufacturing cost and not have any axle load to simplify the bearings. For now, two types of gearing will be looked. Cross ratio gears and double helicoidal gears, also known as shovel. Once will this be done, the final step would be able to start gear sizing using stats of the earth CAD tools. Bearing sizing also using CAD tools. And finally, lubrification and design. This part will be very important and be the consecration of my work. The design has to take into account it has to be integrated in an engine so weight and size does matter. Efficiency, reliability, and thermal aspect are very important. For now, I'm thinking about using a dry sump or all jet lubrification, but that's just some idea and I will have to think about that. Thank you for watching. If you have any remark and question, please leave them on the comment part. You want to follow me and help me during this thesis? You can look at my blog, the link is in the description, I will be glad you to help me. Thank you guys.